Welcome back to High Gain Guitar Academy. I'm Neil, and today we're gonna to talk about power chords. What is a power chord? Well, it sounds really difficult because it has the word power at the front, so it makes you a little bit nervous. But let me tell you, power chords are the easiest thing to play in the chord world. It's basically the same shape no matter where you move it, and uh, we're gonna use it a lot because it's a huge, huge part of rock and metal music in particular, but also guitar playing as a whole. So let's jump in. You're gonna see power chords done a couple different ways, but today I'm gonna to show you how I typically do them, as well as a couple variations. A power chord is typically comprised of two or three notes. So it's gonna be the root note, or the note you start from. In this case, let's use the three of the big E with my pointer finger. <laughs> Then we're also going to use the fifth. Now that's fancy guitar talk for, it's basically just the fifth note in the major scale, the happy scale. Right, one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be your root note, the fifth, which is always gonna be the string down from where you are and up two frets. One string down, two frets up. That's where that's gonna be. So pointer on the three of the E, for example, to start out. Then I'm gonna use my ring finger or my pinky. Now this is where it's gonna get into some variations. Whichever one is more comfortable for you. I tend to use my pinky a lot, um, but ring finger, totally fine. So whichever you wanna do. Uh, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna do it how I do it and I like my pinky. So, three of the E with the pointer, pinky on five of the A. Now if we just play those two strings, the E and the A together, That qualifies as a power chord. Now, if you wanna take it one step further and add a third note, we can also hold the five of the following string. So whatever note your pinky is on on the A string, you can also hold the following string on the same fret. In this case, we're on the fifth fret of the D because we're on the fifth fret of the A. So I'm gonna bar both of those with my pinky. Again, if you're using your ring finger, you're just gonna bar the two of those holding them both down at the same time, okay? To add all three of those notes together, we've completed a root note, the fifth, and the octave. Now an octave is what? It's the same note, higher or lower. So the octave, that last third note, is the same note as your first note. It's just an octave up. So doing a three note power chord makes it sound a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, but the two note power chord is totally fine and I, I do that one quite a bit. Now let's recap by moving it to a different area of the neck because like I said, power chords can be played anywhere on the neck and it's gonna be the same shape. So let's go to the seven of the big E string with our pointer finger. Then we're gonna add in the fifth. Like we said, it's gonna be one string down, two frets higher. So from the seven of the E, I'm gonna go down to the seven of the A and two frets higher, so that's the ninth fret. So we're gonna play the seven of the E and the nine of the A together. And there's a power chord. Remember, we can also add in that third note by taking our A string note, moving it down a string on the same fret and barring both of those, the A and the D string. So here's that. So you see, no matter where I move the power chord up and down that E string, it's always gonna be the same shape. Now here's the cool thing. I can also move that power chord down a string to the A. So we can do power chords starting from the A string and the shape doesn't change. Now past that, moving on to the D string, the tuning of the guitar, is a little bit different because when you get to the G and the B, there's a one fret difference. Anyway, that's a story for another day. But for now, just know that you can do power chords, the same shape, starting from the E string on any fret or starting on the A string from any fret. Now getting from one power chord to another is actually pretty easy too. Because you're holding down the same shape, you don't really have to pick up your fingers and rearrange everything like you would with open chords, you know? You can just kind of slide that shape around depending on where you want to go. Remember, when it comes to sliding, I always like the Goldilocks rule, which basically means it's got to be just right. You don't want to hold it down too lightly or the notes won't 
make notes. And if you hold down too hard, not only are you gonna wear your hand out, but you're not gonna be able to move around very easy if you death grip the thing. So just medium pressure. Now when you're sliding this power cord around, you're not just sliding one note, you're sliding several notes. So you have to keep in mind that the spacing of the frets changes as you go higher up the neck. They start out down here pretty wide at the, at the first fret, but as you go up the neck, they get a lot more slim and you have to kind of adjust to that as you move up to the higher frets. Notice how I tighten my uh, spacing between my fingers when I go up to the higher frets. Sometimes if I go to the higher frets, I may end up using my ring finger because there's a little less space in between. Makes it a little bit easier to get in there if you have big hands like I do. So when you're moving or sliding your fingers from one power cord to the next, remember medium pressure and your thumb can kind of either just be on the back of the neck, you may have it hanging over the top, there's nothing really specific your thumb has to be doing other than sort of giving a little bit of pressure back from the other side to uh, keep your fingers on the fretboard. An exercise I would suggest to get good at this would be to grab, let's say, the first fret of the big E string and just start moving up one fret at a time until you maybe get to, let's say, the 12, because you don't typically play power chords much past the 12, at least not often. And then do the same thing on the A, but maybe let's try it backwards. Let's try going from 12 back down to one. Now don't forget, when you're sliding around doing these power chords, instead of pushing your fingers to the next fret, act as if someone is pulling your hand, maybe from the lower part of your hand or your wrist. It makes it a lot easier to move around if you're using the weight of your arm to move rather than pushing your fingers up a hill. Last thing I wanna discuss when it comes to power chords is open power chords. So we stopped at the first fret, but we can also do an open string power chord. All that is, is a power chord where you're not using your pointer finger to hold the root note. So if your root note, or your starting note is the open string, all you have to do is hold the fifth and or the octave if you want it. So, so if you're playing the open E, you just hold down the two of the A because one string lower, two frets higher. And then if you want to, also the two of the D. Same thing for the A string, open A, then a string down and two frets higher, that's gonna be the two of the D and if you want to, two of the G. So getting good at going from your open power chords to your fretted power chords is also gonna be really important. Now why use power chords over open chords? Well, other than the ease of playability, you can see that they're really quick to access and move around the neck uh, they're, they're just infinitely faster, but also you can play certain chords that you wouldn't be able to play it. Now why use power chords over open chords? Well, one is just the sound. They're much more focused, fewer notes, uh, maybe a little bit more aggressive. Now why use power chords over open chords? Well, there's several reasons. One is just the sound. They're very focused, there's less notes, so they're more to the point, which I think really works well for rock and metal music. Another reason is you can't play certain chords using open chords. Open chords for certain keys do not exist. Like there's no C sharp open chord. You just have to play a bar chord or just the power chord. Because like I said, some chords, they're just, there aren't an open chord version. So learning bar chords is kind of where you wanna go, but learning your power chords is sort of the first step into that. The main reason to use power chords is probably just covering more ground. You're able to use the entire neck, whereas most open chords are limited to the first three or four frets. But power chords, you can kind of take them anywhere. Oh. 
And that's pretty much it, guys. That's power chords. I think the main thing you want to work on, first of all, is deciding which fingers you want to use to achieve your power chords, whether it be your ring finger or your pinky, whichever one is most comfortable. And also just moving around, moving fret to fret, string to string, um, any kind of exercises you can come up with, just jumping from one fret to another or string to string. <laughs> any of that kind of stuff. All of it helps and uh, we'll start to apply that to songs. But that's the basic technique. Take it, love it, learn it, use it, and we'll see you next time.